Welcome back to Selenon Rising, where there is no music this time, and I don't know why, so hopefully that's not weird. Now, tell me where it is and no one has to get hurt. Talking about the beacon thing? Yeah. <coughs> Admit it, you were the one who took the beacon. Whoa, sudden taser thing. So, who are you really? Holy crap. Yep, the sound is definitely working. <laughs> JJ reaches into his pocket and pulls out some kind of unusual object. He switches it on and electricity crackles from it in a very sinister way. I, uh... Are you from the Yakuza? The Mafia? Or a rival cell looking to take me down? Wait just a minute, I'm not... You're one of Zarla's lackeys, aren't you? She has her fingers in everything. I knew she was out to sabotage my operation. Watch out. Dun dun. Oh, bad things are happening. He tries to hit me with the device, but I quickly block him. With his other free arm, he slaps me in the face before I can have a chance to defend myself. Uh-oh. Mask coming off. No, okay, it didn't come off. Luckily, the mask I'm wearing dulls the force of the hit, and I recover quickly. My vision flickers for a few seconds before going back on. I hope it didn't take any damage. Okay, like, this art doesn't look bad, but why does it look, like, worse than the character art? I guess they didn't have the same person draw both parts. Or oh, it's just a different style or something? Don't think you can do this and get away with it. Just try and stop me! Oh, well, I stopped him. He rushes at me again with his strange wand of electricity, <laughs> which sounds really dirty for some reason. This time, I'm ready for him, and I dodge to one side, grab his arm, and force it out of his hand. You just don't know when to give up, do you? Oh, I think I tased him. Nyaaag! I turn the electricity towards him, and he begins to shake violently, a burning smell in the air. Um, I don't think these tasers are supposed to literally kill you. <laughs> Finally, he drops to the ground, unconscious. I stand there for a few moments, still stunned by what has transpired, when I hear footsteps behind me. I turn, electric wand in hand, in the direction they're coming from. Who's there? Oh, it's him. Anyway, <laughs> I'm momentarily shocked as Blue comes around the corner. Thinking quickly, I turn off my communication device with Sam so I don't completely blow my cover. It's me, Violet! Oh, is this guy dumb? Like, why did he just, like, call out my real name? Like, randomly? This, this is odd, actually. Blue, what are you doing here? I lower the weapon, finding the switch and shutting it off. I reach up and pull off my mask as well, holding it at my side. Like, he t he could have totally blown my cover if I didn't hang up. I thought you won't be able to use a backup about now, but it looks like you have things under control. He caught me off guard, but he went down pretty quick. I could use some cuffs, though. Oh, look, my eyes are normal. Oh, wait, did, did she say that she turned her mask off? Because I wasn't really paying attention, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. No problem. Blue comes the rest of the way into the clearing and hands me his handcuffs. Thanks, Blue. Oh yeah, she's holding her mask now. I didn't notice that. I kneel down and put the cuffs on the still unconscious JJ. Then Blue helps me up. You look a bit stiff, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. I just slammed my knee on the concrete a while ago, but otherwise I'm good. I'm glad. Me too. So how did you find me? Your car has a tracker. I've been keeping tabs on you like the chief wanted, and I saw you stop here. I heard of JJ. He's a compulsive car man and smuggler. He's been trying to get ahead by any means necessary, so I was afraid for the worst. Well, I appreciate it. Anytime, Vi. Blue smiles warmly at me, and my stomach does a weird flip-flop. I look back down at JJ to distract myself. He whimpers quietly, so I know he's regained consciousness. Do you think he'll talk? I don't know, but we might as well give it a try before we hand him over to the enforcers. I recorded it in, but we still have a few minutes before they get here. Hey, wake up. 
Oh yeah, because well, now he'll definitely know because I'm standing right next to this dude. Is this actually a good idea? Oh, uh, uh, what? You're an informer for the Bureau? Uh, yeah, I'll go with that. What do you want from me now? You didn't get enough? Blue looks over at me and nods, indicating that I should be the one to ask the questions. No, not really. I want to know what you have to do with all of this. I have the feeling you're involved in more than just the black market. I don't know what to tell you. Let's start here. Were you involved in any of the burglaries that have been taking place recently in the inner city? You seem to have a sticky finger problem. I might know something about that. If you do a little something for me, that is. Uh... Yeah, we could just tell him we're gonna do it and then not actually do it. The Bureau shows leniency to suspects who cooperate with an investigation. I do like that idea. Being stuck in prison isn't exactly my cup of tea. So... So, yeah, I might know something about the robberies that have been going down. I heard some whispers on the wind. And... Yeah, nothing, man. That's all I got. Not an idiot. I know you've been cutting some big deals lately. Radios, computers, machina, or machina parts, the works. <laughs> machina parts? All I can think of is TF2. Blue had said that JJ was up and coming, but that was bigger than I was expecting. What is that? You've got it all wrong. I'm just a lonely middleman. The people I work for have all the control. I just do what I'm told. Whoops. Okay. I all tab by accident. Oh, yeah. Do you control you? Do they control you into murdering people, too? What? The way I see it, the last burglary that took place ended in a murder. You ever heard of Al Grange? I reckon you have. I've heard of him. Is that because you killed him in his home? Maybe he walked in on you taking some stuff? <laughs> Maybe you walked in on him accidentally while you were trying to find out what he had in his study? What? <laughs> oh wait, yeah, no, that makes sense. Let's say hypothetically that I did that job. Okay. Hypothetical me didn't see Grange. Hypothetically, he wasn't home. That's not what our lab guy said when they recreated what took place at the crime scene. So, either they're lying or you're lying, and I tend to believe them over a low-luck tech dealer. Well, random enforcer. Just as Blue says this, the enforcers arrive. They pull JJ to his feet and march him towards the fence. They've cut the padlock off and pulled it open. Sitting right outside the fence is an enforcer van, as well as several other vehicles. As they frog march him towards the van, he shouts back towards Blue and I. I really didn't kill him! I don't know what you're talking about! That's not my business! You're going to regret framing me for this! He probably didn't do it, because that would be too, way too obvious. JJ continues to shout, but his shouts are muffled behind the van door as it shuts behind him. Blue turns to me. What do you think? I think he definitely did it, but why? What do you think? I don't know. I'm not sure I buy it. His business is all about stealth and avoiding prison. Leaving a trail of bodies doesn't really fit with that. He admitted to being there, though. Hypothetically. <laughs> Blue laughs. laughs. Yes, hypothetically. But who else would have done it? Besides, no one says it was premeditated. He probably just walked in on Grage accidentally. That would explain the mess in the study. Yeah, you're probably right. Anyway, we'll sort it out. Yeah... So, what did that kid send you here for anyway? Oh, I was looking for something. For some reason, I don't want to tell Blue exactly what I came here looking for. I feel like there's more to this beacon than Sam is letting on, but I don't want to get Blue's hopes up, or get him sucked into anything that doesn't end up panning out. But, I don't think he has it. Shame. Well, you want to meet me back at HQ? I have a few things to do down there, but maybe we could grab a drink and a debrief or something. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I'll meet you there soon. Blue waves and walks towards his car, which is parked next to mine. I watch him drive off. After Blue is out of sight, I turn around and walk swiftly back towards JJ's warehouse. 
When I reach the building, I head for the door off to one side. Luckily it's unlocked and I creak it open and walk carefully inside. It's a lot larger than it looks on the outside and it's filled with all kinds of paraphernalia. But there's one thing that sticks out like a sore thumb, a busted up metal rod lying haphazardly in the middle. Oh, okay. I walk over to the pole and quickly recognize it as the missing lamppost from the parking lot. There you are. I walk towards where the light of the lamppost would be and notice a slightly rusting round piece holding it together. Gripping it with all my might, I turn it with a loud screech. Sorry, I just got distracted by the weird, like, angle of this building. Where, like, the roof is, like, slanted to one side. To my surprise, the whole top portion slides off glass and all, revealing an unusual cylindrical device wedged into the pole. It's gunmetal gray with a smooth exterior and almost looks like a giant pill. There we go, finally! I disconnect the thick umbilical cord <laughs> from beneath it and heave it into my arms, noting that it's much heavier than it looks. I walk jauntily towards the exit, hoping not to run into anyone on my way out. I make my way through the maze of junk and back to the fence. I put the beacon down and open the trunk of my car. On one side of my trunk, I notice a blinking red light. Hmm, I've never seen that before. It must be the tracker that Blue activated to find me. I lift the beacon into the car and slam the trunk shut. Isn't he, like, if he has a tracker on your car, isn't he going to be suspicious that you've been here for so long, even though you said that you didn't find anything? I should go meet Blue before he gets worried. Or suspicious. Maybe I should tell him about the beacon. No, not yet. Actually, I should go and see Sam before I meet Blue. I don't want him to become suspicious. There's still a possibility that I can use him as an inroad to figure out what Zarla and her crew are up to. Oh yeah, am I going to show him the beacon? I get into my car and pull away from JJ's. Bolt's auto looks abandoned when I pull up. The two large garage doors, which were open this morning, are closed and it's dark inside the shop. I check the time on my dash. It's only late afternoon and any normal business would definitely still be open. I get out of my car and head towards the small side door which leads to the office. I twist the door handle and it opens easily. Hello? Sam? Are you here? I walk out onto the darkened garage floor. There's still no sign of Sam or anyone else for the matter. The car he was working on earlier is gone and two more sit in its place, one up on the lift and the other with its hood up. I head towards the back of the shop. Still nothing. Sighing, I walk back towards the office. Where did he go? And why did he leave before I came back? Maybe he heard more of the conversation with JJ than I thought he did and he made a break for it? Crap, he was my best chance of figuring all this out. I walk out of the office and back towards my car, but before I can get all the way there, I stop dead. Uh oh, <laughs> the trunk of my car is open, and even from here I can see that the tech is gone. What on earth? I run to the car and poke around in the trunk just to be sure, even though I know that someone took it. I look around again. How did they get into my trunk? And who? How did they even know that the beacon was there? It could be Sam. I walk around the left side of the garage where I assume there's just a solid wall. Surprisingly, there's a small side door positioned near the back of the garage. I walk towards it. Just as I'm about to reach for the door handle, the door pops open. I jump back in surprise. Oh, it is Sam. Sam pokes his head out. What the? In here. I recover from my surprise and duck into the side door behind Sam. You scared the hell out of me. Someone took the beacon from my car. Oh, that was mean. Just wanted to hook it up. I was looking for you. Why didn't you just wait? Does it matter? Jeez, you nearly made me have a heart attack. We re-enter the main area of the garage, and Sam stops near what looks like an electric breaker box. You did what I sent you to do. Well done. Zarla's team could definitely use someone like you. Are you sure? From what you pulled back there, it seems like you don't exactly trust me. Well, there are still a lot of unknowns. Even when you're a me mechanic, there's the risk of you being loyal to a different repair shop. 
There's a lot of competition. We don't all see eye to eye about certain things, so I didn't want to take any chances. As I said, I've never been involved with the Resistance before. But when I heard about Zarla, well, I had to see what all the fuss was about. Hmm. Everything you're saying does check out. I ran a trace and it matches your story. Does that mean I'm in? I guess it does. Welcome aboard. Sam pulls open the metal door of the breaker. He flicks some switches and I hear a loud buzzing noise. I've installed the beacon on the roof. Better brace yourself. This thing puts out an unstable magnetic field when it's winding up. Exactly how powerful is this thing? Powerful enough to track a Selenon. In other words, you better make sure your bowels are clenched. <laughs> yeah, really. Whoa. He presses a large button and the building shakes. I suddenly... Suddenly I hear an ominous series of pops from my mask. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. He didn't notice anything. <laughs> what a rush, huh? This is ancient tech at its finest. That's all very exciting, but you know what? I think I have to be going... Hmm? Oh god. <laughs> I break out into a cold sweat under my mask as my voice begins to sound like a telescreen with no reception. Well, this is not cool. Can you say something? No, I just... I think I should probably be going. Oh god, the static guy is, is pretty scary. What? He didn't notice? Wow, he's so clueless. Uh, huh? Well, I'll need to contact Zarla and organize a rendezvous. I really have to leery crackle! I grip my face in desperation, but my vision is getting worse and worse by the second. Maybe you should stop talking. <laughs> I don't think he would notice if you, like, stop talking. I can hardly see where the exit is. Oh god. What? This guy is seriously clueless. Are you sure you're okay? You don't need a cough drop? Stop talking! <laughs> no, I'm fabs. No problems, just- <laughs> A horrible screech emanates from my mouth, and I try to cover it to avoid being heard. Underneath the mask, I can smell something burning. I have no choice to run- I have no choice but to run, regardless of whether or not I can see. I try to stumble out the door, but end up whacking into Sam instead. We both topple clumsily to the floor, his face pressing against my cleavage- Oh, awkward. Oof. Welp, awkward. <laughs> to my horror, the mask detaches, hitting the ground with a wince-inducing crack and the sound of electrical sparks. I cover my face and attempt to pick it up, but it's too late. Sam has gotten a glimpse of the real me. Oh, well, even your hair part fell off. Eek! Don't, don't, don't look! Mm, I guess this is kind of awkward. Sam crawls backwards embarrassing, embarrassedly, adjusting his glasses, which have half fallen off his face as well. Uh oh. You're, you're violent, aren't you? Who's asking? So Zarla was right, there really is a violent. The way he regards me, he, you'd think he just found Santa Claus. What are you playing at, kid? He gets up, reaching for the panel, and I quickly go for my gun. But just as I begin to aim it, he presses a button and it flies out of my hands, landing on a large metal piece sitting halfway across the garage. Ooh, smart of him. Whoa, 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 let's not do anything rash here. I mean you no harm. For some reason, I highly doubt that. Look, before you try and arrest me, there's something you really need to see. What is he showing me? Sam pushes another button on the same control panel, and a panel the size of a door opens in the garage floor, leading down to some kind of basement. Uh... I don't know. I'm not one for mysterious staircases. What's down there? Something that you need to see. I don't trust that this isn't a trap. If you're going to try and kill me, I'd much prefer we just get it over with. I don't intend on killing you unless you give me no other choice. I think we could be useful to one another, in fact. Useful how? The information I've managed to gather using the beacon you brought back has answered some questions for me. I think they will for you as well. Well? I have to show you, it's down there. 
He indicates the passage to the basement. I still don't trust him, but I can sense that he's telling the truth, at least for now. Fine. But they're expecting me back at the bureau, so don't get any funny ideas. I wouldn't dare. Wow, very, very interesting. <laughs> I walk in front of Sam down the steep steps through the passageway, which leads to a dingy hallway. He grabs a flashlight hanging on the wall and flicks it on, illuminating a pitch black tunnel. Large wires snake through on either side, though where they lead is anyone's guess. Where are we going? Just keep going straight, it's not much farther. As soon as he finishes his sentence, the hallway opens up into a large room. It matches the dinginess of the hallway, but light pours from the far wall. I squint, shielding my eyes from the sudden shift in light. What is that? Are we outside? No, of course not. Slowly, I lower my hand, taking a closer look at the wall as my eyes begin to adjust. I've never seen anything like it before. There are a number of screens, connected to several rusty boxes on either side, with lights gently blinking on and off. So you've never seen TVs? Or maybe she means she's never seen these boxes. I recognize the construction as a computer bank, but only from pictures. I've never seen one in real life. So they don't have computers in the future, but they have like, voice and face changing disguise masks. Computers are the highest level of tech, and are kept under lock and key at the bureau. Oh wait, that's true, I forgot that all the tech is like, yeah. How Sam got his hands on the setup is beyond me. I... I... I can't find any words to express, express my shock. EXPRESS! I'm awestruck. The tech is pretty rusty, but it gets the job done. It's true, the computers are busted up gray and grimy after hundreds of years underground, but merely the fact that they exist in this random basement is stunning. As I start to get past some of my initial shock, I take a closer look, and I'm surprised all over again to see that on each screen, a moving scene from the city is playing out. I wonder if any of these scenes are important. I guess this is like a surveillance setup. But what are they surveying? We'll have to find out next time. Thanks for watching.